We're now going to do a little work where we introduce some algebra together with the fractions. So let's say, for example, you were faced with a problem like, let's add b and b over 3. Now that might seem like a nightmare, right? Because suddenly you've got algebra together with your fractions. But let's not panic, because in most cases, if we just think about it, what we do with numbers, we'll be able to figure out how to do it with the algebra 2. So let's make it simpler and go back to dealing with numbers. So if we had the same sort of question, what would you do if we had 5 plus 5 over 3? Well, you've been doing this, right? You know how to deal with it. You have to write 5 as a fraction, so you know 5 is just 5 over 1, right? So you've got 5 over 1 plus 5 over 3. Now you've been adding fractions for ages. You know how to add fractions. You have to find a common denominator. Well, obviously the common denominator, if you've got 1 and 3, has to be 3. So you've got to write, rewrite both of these fractions here as fractions with a denominator of 3. Well, in order to do that, you've got to say, what did I multiply by to get from the 1 to the 3? Well, I multiplied by 3. What I do to the bottom of the fraction, I must do to the top of the fraction. So I've got to say 5 times 3, which is 15. This one, there's no issue, right? I had 5 over 3. I haven't changed anything, so it's just going to stay as 5 over 3. And now what do I do in the next step? Well, I can just say, what is 15 plus 5? And I will get my answer of 20 over 3. OK, so now let's see if we can do the same story, but with letters. Well, let's just copy our pattern, right? The first thing is we would need to write this one as b over 1. No problem. In the next line, we would need to find a common denominator. And in the same way, your common denominator here, because you're dealing with a denominator of 1 and a denominator of 3, your common denominator is going to be 3. Same story as before. What have we done to the 1 to get to a 3? We've multiplied by 3. So what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. So we must take this thing here and also multiply it by 3. Now, you're not going to get a nice answer like 15, but you know perfectly well, if you take b and you multiply it by 3, you get b multiplied by 3. And you know from your work on algebra that the nice short way of writing this is just to say, 3b. So that's what we're going to get over here. We're going to get 3b, which is just 3 multiplied by b. Okay, let me just scrub that out so we don't get that in the way. Okay, and then your other bit over here, this thing, this one here, hasn't changed at all, right? It had a denominator of 3, it's going to stay a denominator of 3, so it's just going to be b. Now you've got the same denominator, so you can just add 3b plus b. And this is where you've now got to bring your algebra knowledge into play. What you've got is you've got three b's and another b. These are like terms. And so what you can say is you've got three b's and another b. So you've got four b's. And so your answer is 4b over 3. And you're finished. I want you to think about one for yourself now. What would you get if you had said, what's 2 over x plus 1 over x? Now, if the algebra makes you panic, stop, don't panic. First of all, go to numbers and think about it with numbers and then come back to the algebra. So let's just say, for example, what would you do if you had 2 sevenths plus 1 seventh? Think about that and then go back to the algebra. OK, pause the video, think, and then let's go through it together. All right, so hopefully 2 sevenths plus 1 seventh wasn't difficult for you at all. You have 2 sevenths and you add on 1 seventh, you're just going to have 3 of those sevenths. What you've always done with adding fractions, if your denominator is the same, you can just add the numerator. 
OK, what about 2 over x plus 1 over x? Well, there you've got exactly the same story. You've got the same denominator. So you're talking about having cut the fraction up into the same size. I mean, having cut the whole up into the same size pieces. So you've got two of them and another one of them. So in total, you've got three of those pieces, three of the x size pieces. The last thing I want to do is show you some quite scary looking fractions, uh, but I'll show you a nice easy way to deal with them. First thing we need to do though is just remind ourselves about the, how fraction and division are related. So if you remember when we first introduced something like one third, you were probably introduced to it by something, a story like, I have one cake or one chocolate or whatever, and we're going to share it, divide it up between three people and then how much will each person get? And we saw that each person would get one third of the cake. And similarly, if we had two cakes and we divided that up, shared it between three people, each person would get two thirds of the cake. The important thing I want you to notice here is that your little fraction can always just be rewritten as a division. And that's going to help us when I show you my scary fraction. So here's my scary fraction. If I have two in the numerator of my fraction, and now in the denominator, I put a fraction itself. So I put four thirds as my denominator. That looks awful, but it's very easy to deal with if you just remember that fraction and division is the same thing. And so we see, what is this? Just like in these two things here, it's going to be the numerator divided by the denominator. And we know how to do fraction division very well now. We can just say that this turns into a multiply and we take the, we flip it upside down, right? And so then we can say 2 times 3 is 6 and we get that 6 over 4 and we can cancel that down and so the answer is 3 over Two. So what looked like a nightmare to start, if long as we recognize that fraction just means division, we can simplify it down to something very, very ordinary.